All right, Brent Porcio, topvelocity.net. Welcome to Youth Pitching Mechanics Step by Step. I'm trying to give you a big picture and then a little bit of the details through the process. I've broken this down many ways. When you get into the top velocity programs, like for example, we've got the Youth Development Kit, which comes with the beginner training, all these great tools I'm gonna show you today. Those give you some basic understanding of what we call pitching one-on-one. Two-phase delivery, which is learning two parts. Simplify it with two parts. Stride, then throw. Learning how elite pitchers separate those phases better. Then I go into the six components. And then eventually I go into the 50 components. So today, it's not going to be uh, really kind of going in and, and nailing down or defining those specific components. Uh, you can get that in our programs. But ultimately right now, I just want to give you a, a simple step through the process and how to guide them through the process. Now, also understand, if they're stuck in any of these parts, they're stuck in the understanding, they're stuck in the ability to do it, then I would recommend you get into our training and learn it more and then get into our evaluation systems, which you can do on your own and you can also come in here and do, and do it as well. So the, just remember, if you're getting stuck, it's because you have to do three things when you, through each point in the delivery. Anywhere in the delivery, you gotta do three things. You gotta, you gotta mobilize to that, to that position so you could have a restriction of mobility. You have to be able to stabilize in that position so you gotta have strength to hold that position. And then you've gotta be able to power through it, meaning you gotta be quick enough to get it in and out because the pitching delivery is, is just under one second. I'm holding the whip because that's the kinetic chain approach. I use a kinetic chain approach from the ground up. That's what the evidence typically points to. And that's, that's the, the whip analogy, right? I wanna learn to use the whole whip. I broke the whip, it doesn't pop the way it's supposed to. Um, <clears throat> but basically, learning how the force comes into the handle and then we accelerate those forces up. I'm still gonna try to keep this simple because it can get very complicated. It can be defined very uh, complex. So I just wanna keep it simple. So that's the goal with this. Step by step would be, would be simple. Okay, when a young pitcher gets on the mound, let's spread their legs somewhere to shoulder width. No, closer than shoulder width, not too far from shoulder width because this is a good moving position. Okay, from here, the hands should obviously be together. They're gonna take their pitch, they're gonna come set. The first thing we do in the pitching delivery is we pick the leg up because this is a one-legged skill. We, we move from this leg to the other leg and we are typically throwing with one leg on the ground. It allows us to do two things. It allows us to create propulsion, move, right? It's hard to move with your feet on the ground. And then it allows us to add in things like rotation. And that's where things get complex because you're putting two things together. So get that kid shoulder width, hands together, closed off, right? And lift the leg. Now with the leg lift, you gotta be careful with it because these young kids don't have the pelvic stability, they don't have the strength to build a lot of momentum out of their leg lift. So it needs to just barely come up. I don't want them to be aggressive with their leg lifts at all because it'll just be a train wreck. So they just pick their leg up slightly. So we call this slide stepping. From here, we are gonna start to fall and move forward. Now understand, falling is down. So falling and moving forward means there is some contractions against the hip and abduction to push the hip sideways. So we are contracting pretty much all the way down the leg to create, to start moving as we fall in that direction. So you're falling and you're moving forward. So we call this forward and down at the same rate. So take the pelvis, move forward and down at the same rate. So just practice that with them. Lift the leg, not too aggressive, fall forward and down at the same rate. Now the goal is to stay on this leg as long as humanly possible, to stay on this leg. This leg just moves with us, stays closed. We don't want anything kicking, anything aggressive. So as we fall forward and down the same rate, maintaining stability on the back leg, your hands will break, your hands will break, okay? Now the steps to breaking the hands is tell them just to put the hands and arms in flexion. That's at a 90 degree angle. Put both of them in 90 degree angle, they'll work best in syncing up with the rest of the kinetic chain. And then once they break, this arm is gonna get in flexion and just help keep us aligned. I like keeping the glove down because it keeps me close and keeps me aligned. Nothing's happened but breaking the hands and getting it up and getting it in line. Like they're aiming with that, that arm. This arm is gonna break and start to pull back. 
it pulls back because it's going to prepare for supporting trunk rotation. So remember, let's go lift, fall forward and down the same rate, maintain stability on the back leg. Everything, our legs are just spreading, our hands are breaking. We're lining up glove side, we're pinching the scaps or scap loading back here. Everything's still up and still sideways. Before landing, we call trigger rotation. Just before landing, this foot will slightly turn open and land 20 degrees close. This foot needs to follow that foot, so these foot sync up. So when this goes, that pushes, okay? So you fell forward and down the same rate, you maintain stability here, you triggered rotation by turning it slightly open, and at the same time, you just pushed off the rubber. And that should push your hips open, okay? So that's the effect. They wanna practice that, it's just fall forward and down the same rate, trigger rotation, power rotation, and feel their stride open, their feet land forward and their hips push open, okay? But this stays close. So while that's happening, this is lining up, this is loading the scap, and this stays close. So at landing, we're in some type of hip to shoulder separation. So we call that the stride phase. So just work on that, teach them those steps. Go back through the video, teach them those steps. Getting to the scap loaded position, hips open, foot still slightly close, glove side in line, okay? From here, because the hips are pushing open, the chin needs to be in line with the belt buckle, not forward, so bring them back. And this needs to fully cock up elbow shoulder height before rotation. So it can be down at landing, but at landing it starts to come up. This will turn over, directly turn over and go down to support st stability of the front leg. The, st the front leg and the glove side need to help stabilize the landing. Okay, so this is up. So this hip, if this is back, is gonna pull this into rotation. That's when the arm keeps laying back, okay? And the trunk will start to go forward. All this is stable. This could even push and extend, and then this turns over, okay? So remember, scap load in the line. This comes up, this turns over, because the hips are leading, chin is behind belt buckle. This will move into rotation. This will keep laying back. This will keep stabilizing, front leg keeps stabilizing as the trunk will move out, and then this will turn over and release the ball. And you can do things like that from here. From this position, feet straight, shoulders closed. You can go like this with them, okay? This is where everything starts moving fast and a lot of moving parts, okay? And then let their trunks go forward as their arm lays back, and then they can throw out of that position. Then if you, once they get that down, you can lift and push back into that position and then use that energy to propel it better. And that's the throwing phase. So not gonna go do much more complexity in it. Things that can help you, the king of the hill teaches them that initial phase of driving. It'll tell them if they're driving because if they're transferring their weight forward, they're gonna have a hard time pushing. The stride accelerators when we have it for youth will help them get down to that loaded position, forward and down at the same rate, okay? help them keep their chin back. If so if the guys are leaking forward, this helps keep them back because it helps them sit and stable. And they, can st and they can even use this to drive from that position and feel it either from this position, drive and throw, or they can work from this position, drive and throw with the foot sideways. So these are cool to help that. I do have some more I'm coming out with the arm stuff eventually, look out for that. But all these are just tools to help teach that process. So go back, review those steps. Um, read here, uh, if, you're, if you're on the article, how to follow each one of those steps in, in that order. And each step is an opportunity to teach and apply a drill and apply a tool and put in good reps until they get it down. And then the end, like a puzzle, they can put all the pieces together and then work at getting consistent at putting all the pieces together and then eventually you, you start to optimize the kinetic chain for a young youth pitcher. And I think that'd be a great process for you and whoever young, whatever young pitcher you're working with. So if you liked the video, please comment, guys. Please share it. P uh, please uh, leave us uh, any information or, or learn more about us. If you want to learn how to evaluate these positions, measure, you know, why aren't they staying back? It's because their hips are too tight. Measure their hips and learn how much range they need and how that works in their mobility training. If they're having a hard time holding the position, they might have some, you say, glute weakness or leg weakness, a core weakness. 
that they need to develop, how we measure that and how we, we show them the goals to achieve through their training so we can get to a place where it's easier for to do these drills. All that can be further developed through the Top Velocity program, even all the way to a Top Velocity camp here working with me and working with us and going through the entire system. So appreciate you listening to the video. Like I said, share it if you like it, and we'll see you on the next one.